Now, the average Nigerian household is dealing with a lot early into 2024. Headline inflation climbed to 33.2% year-on-year in March, while food inflation rose to 40% in March from 37.9% in February. For households that fall into band A of electricity supply, the tariffs will go up. How does a household navigate these headwinds? Joining us to tackle these questions is Ola Oladele, a chartered financial and analyst and founder of the Money Wit Club. Ola, it's such a pleasure to have you this morning. Good morning. Thank How, you for having me. You're most welcome. All right, let's start with this inflation figures, which, of course, you know, my last conversation. What kind of price pressures are Nigerian households facing at this point, in your opinion? It's, it's quite intense. And I think that a lot of people are making very serious decisions, um, considering should we go out to eat or should we stay at home? There's food at home. Um, should we switch off the AC to conserve power? Um, people are making adjustments. People are now going to the market to shop as against going to, uh, shopping in the supermarket. Why? Because it is biting on everyone. The price pressure is a lot. Um, of course, we are hoping that things will get better, but for now, it's, it's quite intense. I mean, the Naira is one of the best performing currencies over the past month. Why would you say that prices haven't dropped? Um, so two things. One is the fact that we are an import-dependent nation. But when you import, it lands in Lagos or wherever um, in the country, and then you clear, then it goes to the wholesaler before it gets to the, um, to the retailer. So let's say that process takes about two months, six weeks to two months from arriving in Nigeria. The fact is, what we're seeing on the shelves right now probably came into the country in what, um, late February, early March-ish. So those prices, the prices of those things will still factor in the previous exchange rate as we go along and maybe also see stability in this current exchange price, um, then we would begin to see the impact. So talking about that, it's, it almost sounds as though when or if, how should households then shield themselves against these uh, headwinds in preparation for that? So the first thing is planning. That question of what your need is and what your want is is very important because you need to know what you should be focusing your energy and your capacity on. Um, after you have planned, then the next thing you need to do is do things, simple things like bulk buying if you have cash. Because um, of course, bulk buying requires some commitment of capital to it. But bulk buying does help. Going to moving from buying in the supermarket to going to the market or going to the wholesaler, you know, things like that also help. Things like also eating at home as against going to the restaurant because the restaurant is also factoring this pricing into their, the price at which they sell the food to you. So things like that, just those adjustments, waiting for things to stabilize, but it's quite important to adopt those. Do you find that Nigerian households currently have these sort of uh, planning patterns or does that just happen in the face of, you know, economic headwinds and downturns? Um, so a lot of people, I mean, two, three years ago, you could afford to go to the store to shop and you were fine. It was easy, it was convenient. But because of the current price pressures, people are now throwing away that convenience to say, oh, I'd rather take bus than take a cab. I would sweat, but yeah, I will be fine. So... I think the current economic situation has forced people to rethink what they thought was stressful or what they thought was convenient and focus more on what can I afford at this time. So making necessary responsible cuts and, exactly. and you know, adjusting lifestyle accordingly. But you know, let's move this conversation into the realm of economic family planning. What considerations do you have perhaps for someone who is looking to start a family, you know, settle down? Should you now start looking at the size of your household? How many children do you have? I don't think have? anybody needs to tell you that, right? Because when you see people driving big cars complaining, um, if you're not driving that car, what you, what's, what's the plan, right? So I want to believe that people should know at this point that you should design your fabric, design your outfit in line with the quantity of fabric you have, you know, as against just hoping. Because even the people that ordinarily support you in that your hope strategy are also struggling at this time. So I would recommend that people should reconsider the number of children they choose to have, especially at this time. You know, that's going to be another conversation mm -hmm. for a whole topic on its own for mm -hmm. another day. But let's move into, you see, let's look at electricity tariffs, for instance, or for band A use, um, users, which has been revised upwards. What effect would you say that has now for the industrial sector, which, you know, falls under that? Will they pass this cost on to consumers? 
The funny thing about that is that if we're actually able to get the 20 hours of power, I would think that prices may come down or should come down. Why? Because the cost of diesel is significant. And I, I dare say um, the cost of powering up manufacturing companies is probably one of the major stressors in that industry, in that sector. So if they're actually able to get 20 hours of power at this 225 rate, I think that it will be better for everyone in the long run. It, um, it would, and if they're able to do that consistently, right, I, I think prices would actually come down. Okay. I mean, of course, we have to, so that can also be debatable. <laughs> you know, some people would, you know, when go against that. The numbers, mm. when you say the numbers, how much is diesel? How, how much consumption, how much do you consume daily? And the thing about diesel is that if you have a 300 kVA generator and it takes five liters of diesel every five minutes, whether you use all that in terms of what the factory needed or not, it will consume that. But if you have a downtime in the factory, for example, and you don't need all that power, you won't pay for it. So over time, you would see that. And then, of course, how much is diesel? How much is compared to it? It's actually cheaper to have power. So if that happens, I do think that based on numbers, um, prices should come down. Okay, so that's actually, it's glad, I'm, I'm glad we're talking about energy consumption because it's also um, households have a role to play in that regard for households, but also particularly fall under that bracket in terms of a, a, the, the tariff plan. Uh, would you apply these same considerations towards them? Yes, yes. So you find people, especially because it's very hot right now, who are forced, especially with people that have kids, to run generator, right? Now, if you're running your generator, you know how much you spend and you don't have 24 hours power. Right. So if you are able to get 24 hours power or 20 hours of power at this new rate, prices should come down. Now, the good thing also is the fact that it is what you switch on that you would pay for, which is the advantage such that you can actually manage your own household cost by saying switch off the power, switch off the AC if we're not here. Let's not use, let's not waste, let's let's adjust from using electric cooker to gas cooker. Those kind of changes will see people begin to make them but the major thing is let there be power okay that's interesting i mean let's talk about now sort of absorbing economic shocks for households of course because we all deal with it what are your thoughts on additional income streams oh very important um uh, th there's a pay band where you might not need it, um, especially if you're an executive where your organization covers bills for you and things like that. Um, but if you are middle level, junior level staff, I always recommend something else. Why? Because organizations themselves are struggling. So there's no guarantee that you'll be able to increase your salary the way you would want to. But you can't now say you're going to keep moving until you find that because you can't guarantee what you're going to find in the next organization, right? And that organization may also be struggling. Now, so what do I recommend? What, do you, what does your hand find to do? Do it. This is a generation or an age where you can have an online business that has absolutely nothing to do with your nine to five and you can coordinate. Um, so that level of upskilling is what I think the general economic situation is calling people to. Um, and it will all be better off for it in the end. Yeah, you know, it's certainly a very likely solution, a very creative one at, at that. But you'd also find, depending on what demographic you're speaking to, some will say, you know, uh, productivity and time management, it, th these two relationally could be an issue. So if I worked a very demanding job, um, where would I find the time to, you know, pay attention to my online business to a productive stage. So what I, I think is you have to plan. You have to plan based on your own current situation. Your business idea has to align with your current situation as against um, something that is an idea that's, that is working for someone else. Um, I also do think that when you are running anything and you're serious about it, your productivity and your time planning has to be top notch. It is given. Um, once you can't do that, then you are probably going to suffer on both ends because your appraisal will probably go down at work and there's a lower chance of a promotion and then the business is definitely not going to do well either. So if you want to go into that, your level of discipline also has to go up. Yeah, you, you just touched on the word <laughs> discipline. You, you, you really just have to pretty yes. much put in the time and yes. know that your efforts have to uh, skyrocket. But let's, you know, look at your outlook for the Nigerian household in 2024. You know, we're already first quarter. Mm. What do you see? So I think this is one year where people just need to hang in there. Um, thankfully, we've seen a re re redirection of the currency. Um, we hope it stabilizes and stays at this level or better, right? Um, but I do think that um, 
people need to hang in there. The impact of this currency stabilization, um, the impact of the power, if and when it comes, will be seen over time. But you just you need to survive to get to that point where you're beginning to benefit from it. So everyone should just hang in there. All right, great points, Olaf. Many thanks for joining us this morning. I will certainly be uh, keeping some of these points in mind myself. Well, have a good one and we'll see you again very soon.